But hackers who have NVIDIA's information aren't playing around. AMD might finally be giving us the goods and Twisted Metal Peacock. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So we're going to talk today about something that we covered in yesterday's hot news, which you can check out that video right up there in case you want the full debrief. But specifically, we're talking about the fact that NVIDIA had one terabyte of data stolen from hackers, and then NVIDIA hacked the hackers by encrypting the data, but they didn't take into consideration the fact that the hackers would be running it on a VM and actually have already backed up the data by the time that NVIDIA encrypted the data that they got from decrypting NVIDIA's data. So now we're here at the point where the hackers are actually making demands of NVIDIA in exchange for not releasing all of the hacked information to the public. So the group known as Lapsus, which I always read as Lapus. <laughs> I can't, I don't know how I'm, I'm reading that. Anyways, cut that part. That's weird. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The group claims that they have things like NVIDIA's drivers, their schematics, their firmware, the lock for the crypto mining setup, and that they're asking that actually NVIDIA lifts that, and they're trying to somehow use that as a power play of getting miners to agree with them on getting NVIDIA to change what they're doing. So according to the hacking group, they say that they were in NVIDIA system for about a week. They grabbed a terabyte of data. They're still waiting for NVIDIA to contact them directly and not just encrypt their servers, but they're also selling the full LHR V2 unlock, which they hope NVIDIA will remove it themselves. And if NVIDIA doesn't contact them, then they'll take care of it. But also noting that they are not state sponsored and not political at all. They simply just want payment, I guess. Uh, they're not clear in their demands, at least publicly. Maybe they've reached out to NVIDIA privately with what their demands are, but they want NVIDIA to push an update for all 30 series firmware to remove those restrictions. And if they remove that, they'll forget about the HW folder, which is a big folder. NVIDIA is not replying to this very much publicly. They've only said that they're investigating an incident, so it's not quite clear what their course of action is going to be, whether or not they'll negotiate with Lapus or they're actually going to not yield to their demands and have it so that things like the LHR firmware gets removed out into the public. The hacking group also says that they know everything about Falcon, which is a class of microcontrollers that are inside of NVIDIA's GPUs, which if that got out could potentially make it so some of NVIDIA's trade secrets are now well known by everybody out there. So it's clear, at least by the statements being made by the hacking group, that NVIDIA is not in a really good position with how much data has been accessed. And it's not clear what NVIDIA's stance on this is going to be or how they're going to move forward on this. But I want to hear what your thoughts are. Do you think that this is some sort of good thing for the end consumer, especially if they unlock the mining thing? I know a lot of people don't necessarily agree with me on the fact that I don't believe NVIDIA should have put the LHR lock onto the GPUs in the first place, but I want to hear your discussion of it down below and whether or not you think NVIDIA should cater to the demands of the hacking group. Let sound off down below about that. But one of the things that we do know, at least according to this hacking group, which take it with a grain of salt, whether or not it's true, but the next name of NVIDIA's architecture is going to be based after David Blackwell and be called Blackwell, which would be the successor to either Loveless or Hopper, depending on when Blackwell actually comes out. But what's finally coming out, and I've been waiting for this for so long, and I'm still not necessarily happy with AMD about how they've gone about this, but we have BIOS updates coming out to Gigabyte motherboards for the 5800X3D CPU that AMD announced back at CES. So we are currently sitting roughly two months since the announcement of this chip by AMD. We have no further details on when it's gonna be released, what the price point's going to be, or anything like that. I really think this is gonna be a very limited edition chip that not a whole lot of people are gonna end up owning and it's just more of a proof of concept than anything else. But Gigabyte's bio support does indicate that it might actually be coming sometime in the near future. There's not really a positive correlation timeline that I've seen of a BIOS update and then the CPU being released, especially when it's only one motherboard manufacturer who's doing it. But I just want AMD to give us the chip. I wish they would have given us more. So just one makes me a little upset. But you know what also makes me upset? TikTok is changing their time on the TikToks, which I just want to talk about the TikToks for a second and how long it takes for you to tune into a TikTok. That alliteration went nowhere fast. Anyways, it looks like they're gonna be investigating expanding up to 10 minute TikToks on the app, which is up from the three minutes that it was changed to back in July, which is up from the 60 seconds that it was initially, which means that you have longer form content being on the platform. Now, a lot of people have their own varied opinions on what TikTok is good for. Personally, I really think the sweet spot is that 30 to 60 second mark, and that once anything starts passing 60 seconds, I tend to scroll off. So going up to 10 minutes, 
is obviously just, it doesn't fit with why I go to TikTok in the first place, which is just to get quick little updates of things that I'm interested in, rather than actually having to sit through a whole bunch of stuff. I kind of go to YouTube for that, but if this is TikTok's play at trying to get YouTube's crown for all the things video, well then I possibly would expect that this would be followed up by a better search algorithm and having more settings behind the scenes for creators to tag their content so that it could potentially be delivered in search engines or at least in TikTok's own search app. It does look like we're in a fierce competition stage when it comes to video delivery. So let me know what you think of TikToks being 10 minutes down below in the comments. And I'm gonna let you know what's going on in the crypto market, crypto stonks time, Bitcoin. <laughs> Huge day, geopolitical instability where things are collapsing in different markets. Bitcoin goes way up, 12% increase on the day to be at 41,697. Ethereum also having a large day up 9% to be at 28,22. This is nowhere near the highs that we saw back in 2021, but still rather good rally on the cryptocurrency parts. Dogecoin up 5.7% to sit at just below 13 cents. I'm actually curious, have any of you people who watch hot news on a regular basis been investing more into cryptocurrency as st instability has been going on or is it just kind of the same course of action which is either buying not buying or whatever you do with cryptocurrency let me know down below and samsung let us know that the note is officially gone it's dead it's no longer to be called the note it's now going to be the ultra so the s22 ultra is the new galaxy note there is no di differentiated branding that's happening which makes a lot of sense considering that samsung hasn't released a galaxy note in quite some time and their flagship phones have been getting bigger and bigger and kind of just taking over what the Note actually was. So the S22 Ultra is now the new Galaxy Note and the new Twisted Metal series, which for some reason is a thing, is now going to be on Peacock and it's gonna start Anthony Mackie as John Doe and he's gonna be a smart talking milkman with no memory of his past, but a pension for driving as fast as he talks. This show is gonna suck. Let's talk about something else that sucks. AMD's RX 6400 is getting some leaked benchmarks. It looks like it might be up to 30% slower than the 6500 XT, which is already a rather slow $200 graphics card. In case you're not familiar, the 6400 was announced back at CES. It looks like it's gonna be OEM only, but it won't require a PCI Express power connector because it only draws 53 watts and it makes it so you can slot it into any OEM system. The benchmark scores that we're seeing has it anywhere between seven and 30% slower than the RX 6500 XT, depending on the price that this falls into. It might be worth it, might not be worth it. What do you think of low-end GPUs? I think this episode of Hot News is over. You should go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about the NVIDIA hack, and I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Cheers.